Hello everybody, my name is Robin Weiss and for my master thesis in cognitive science I have investigated short-term vertical trajectory prediction of aircraft under the supervision of Dr. Matthias Poppe at the research and development department of DFS, Deutsche Flugsicherung GmbH. What we basically did was um, predicting the uh, flight level of um, climbing or departing aircraft in a short time frame of about six minutes and we would like to show you why this could be interesting. Consider a departing example aircraft which is climbing through airspace or control sector A into a vertically split control sector B2 and this happens via the green trajectory which is also the one we want to predict or almost predict with our neural network. The conventional trajectory calculation without using AI however is often faulty and might be too low for example like this yellow calculated trajectory. This wrong flight path touches now sector B1, which accordingly gets one additional sector count for a flight which will never actually reach it. The problem is that in a high traffic situation, this announced flight might be the feather that breaks the balance and another flight might even be denied by sector B1, which relies on wrongly predicted flight path. And that's exactly the situation we want to avoid by a reliable vertical trajectory prediction. So to make our prediction, we used uh, data from more than 100,000 recorded flight profiles over Germany in the year 2018. The data we were looking at are climbing flights, which look basically like this, flight level over time. And from each of these flights, we now picked 16 random sample points, for example, this point. At this point, the flight sent its mode Sierra data down to Earth, the same data which are also available via the OpenSky network. And the task was now from these uh, data to generate and calculate features, which will be explained in the next slide, and then to classify how high will this flight be after six minutes. And this happened in the flight level band between flight level 195 and 295 in 2000 feet intervals. And so the classification we like to achieve was something like at this point, make the classification and predict, for example, the flight will be inside this 2,000 feet flight level interval after six minutes. From each of the trajectories, 16 random points were chosen to sample training and test data. At each point, the flight level after six minutes should be predicted. The input features used to compose the feature vector are the current rate of climb of the aircraft at the moment when the prediction is done, measured in feet per minute, the highest rate of climb of the aircraft in the first few seconds after takeoff, the current flight level of the aircraft, the time which has elapsed since takeoff, the current speed of the aircraft in knots, the speed at the moment of takeoff or V2, an off level flag encoded as a Boolean variable if the aircraft was stopped during its climb and had to level off, the flight range, short, medium, or long range as a categorical variable, and the ICAO type code of the aircraft as well as a categorical variable. The classification itself is done by a fairly small feedforward network with only four layers. The results of the prediction are given in percent of correctly classified samples from the test set per class. The flight level class boundaries can be seen at the bottom of the figure. The accuracies are either above or close to 60%. Note that higher classes yield better results as there are more training samples. The results can even be boosted above 60% for all classes when training an individual model for each of the most common departure aerodromes such as Frankfurt, Munich, Hamburg, etc. When reducing the prediction time frame, which is an adjustable parameter, from 6 minutes to only 3 minutes, the predictions yet again become a lot more accurate. Another adjustable parameter is the prediction precision, which was in 2000 feet intervals before and there is a considerable accuracy drop to around 40% on average when increasing the precision to 1000 feet intervals only. The limitations of the introduced approach are of course missing input features like weather data or takeoff weight, the limited data set with too little samples for uncommon aircraft types for example, and the question whether using a neural network is a good tool to tackle the problem at all, as another own study showed good first results with looking at similarities of different climb trajectories for example. At the same time with our results we can enhance efficiency, thinking back of our motivating example at the beginning, we can improve conflict prediction, 
and maybe eventually establish an easy and straightforward controller assistance tool. Now thank you all very much for your attention and we are looking forward to your questions.